Oh, hello, my beautiful budding sommelier. Sommeliers. I'm Steffi and welcome back to Steffi's Wine Club. Today we're here to finish off our little mini series about Valpolicella wines with Valpolicella Rapasso. So on the hierarchy of Valpolicella wines, uh, the ones I'm doing, it does go Classico, Rapasso, Amarone, and I've done it in order of uh, Classico, Amarone, Rapasso, and it's solely because the production of Amarone plays into the production of Rapasso, and you're going to see very shortly how, uh, but I want everyone to remember that this is the medium class. This is sort of the best value wine of the Valpolicella region, in my opinion. You get a bunch of the best of both worlds for not as high of a price point as Amarone, but to discuss how it's made, you really needed to understand how Amarone is made first, so that's why I've chosen to do the videos in this order. You'll remember our last video in this mini-series. We talked about the production of Amarone grapes and how through Pasito they're dried and then after they're dried for four or five months they're pressed and the very concentrated juice is taken from the grapes. But what's left over is something called the Amarone pumice. And that's the collection of skins and leftover flesh from the grapes. Um, and those are still useful for wine production even if all the juice has been pressed out of them. And the use for them comes up in the making of Rapasso wines. So the word Rapasso comes from the idea of repassing wine through the leftovers and the pumice of the Amarone production. And this happens by taking very fresh, uh, what you would call Classico wine thus far. It's not completely fermented, still very uh, rich with sugar, and letting it sit on those grape skins, that pumice left over from the Amarone, for um, a week to a couple weeks usually. And this process is called maceration. And basically what that is, is the grape skins have already been crushed, they've already been chewed up, for lack of a better word, uh, by whatever technique the production used for creating the Amarone and juicing them. And this broken, partially broken down skin really allows some of the flavors, some of the tannins, some of the structural components left over that didn't get absorbed into the Amarone to be absorbed by the Rapasso. And this is where the rest of the alcoholic fermentation uh, takes place for the wine. And then it is then aged, usually in oak, usually for one to two years. Um, Rapasso doesn't have the same standards that Classico and Amarone does in terms of like it must be aged this minimum of years in this minimum of oak for this long and blended with this. It is a blended wine, it is a bit more relaxed. It's a style of wine that really blends the boldness and the flavors and the complexity of something like an Amarone with the everyday price point and the everyday drinkability of something like a Classico. As you would expect for something that falls in between a Classico and an Amarone, it is still quite high in acid. It's grown those same grapes in those same cold conditions that's really going to preserve that acidity, which is really critical for all Valpolicella wines. Uh, but it does incorporate sort of a medium of the two wines. Classico tends to be very light, and Amarone tends to be very full-bodied, and Rapasso is usually quite medium-bodied. It's very fruit-forward, often with some slightly dried hints of fruit, but mostly very juicy, almost overripe fruit um, forward. It has some spice, but definitely not as much as the Amarone. It's going to have a little bit of vegetal maybe, but again, not as much of the Amarone. It strikes a very nice middle balance. It would go great with food, you could drink it on its own. It's not really defined by any subgenre of type of wine you're going to be drinking. Great, so the Rapasso I'm drinking today is this gorgeous 2015 Rapasso from Tomasi. Uh, if you will go to Tomasi's website, I'd actually really recommend it. They have some great diagrams about how they make the Rapasso and how Rapasso is made in general. Um, I know it's kind of hard just hearing me talk about it, so if you need a visual aid, going to their website is actually a really good read. They have a lot of great information, which isn't always the case of individual vineyards, so I think that's really awesome. This wine I got for $23.95 Canadian here at the liquor stores um, and I think that's a really great price point you know I think it is a better quality it does have more complexity than just the Classico or the Superiore um, but it doesn't break the bank quite in the same way that Amarone does. For me, for this wine, I definitely got very fruit forward. The smell immediately just like takes you over. It's very uh, ripe or maybe even overripe dark red berries like cherries and maybe blackberries. I definitely get some vanilla and some sandalwood on the nose, which I'm guessing is coming from the 18 months this particular wine spent in oak. 
Uh, I definitely do get some cocoa powder, maybe even a hint of coffee. You do have the same, com you do have some complexity, but not the same complexity as the Amarone. You know, with the Amarone, if you remember, we had all those vegetals. Uh, notes and all those spice notes and it really broke down into like just a wave of flavors. This, while very pleasant and very amazing and very lovely to drink, it doesn't quite give you that wave after wave after wave of different flavors. It hits you at once, uh, it's very nice flavors, very subtle, very balanced flavors, but it doesn't give you that same complexity that an Amarone gives you. And that's really what you're paying for when you're paying for an Amarone. But for me, with the Raposo, I find it very elegant, uh, very lovely, very delicious. It goes well on its own or with food. I think it strikes a nice middle balance between the Classico and the Amarone in the fact that you can buy it and drink it not quite as sparingly as the Amarone. It goes great with food. Or in the fall and winter, it does just make a nice sipping wine when you want to be cozy with a glass of red wine. Thank you again for tuning in to Steffi's Wine Club. I want to thank you for sticking with me for all three episodes of this Valpolicella mini-series. If you liked it, please, of course, comment. If you didn't, you can comment still or send me an email at steffieswineclub at gmail.com. Again, if you like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And until next time, this is the final time I'm going to say it for a little bit. Saluti!